Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So um, in the last video, we kind of talked about all the important people that need to be involved in developing these, you know, rich, you know, mechatronic systems, right? And that we referred to the software people. And so I want to get a little bit more specific in this video, right? And and so we're going to focus mostly on this controller, you know, in a way it's, it's uh, MathWorks has a, an amazingly good reputation on helping people develop these things. And when you develop them, typically you're operating with something that looks a little bit like this. This is a test board. It's provided by Texas Instruments. It's what they call uh, a C2000 board. Mostly the C2000 is that little black square right there, if I'm getting this into the camera view properly. And uh, it's really about just kind of operating and connecting to hardware. And it's through, you know, wires that we connect to these, these pins and essentially uh, have a device, a hardware device that's connecting into the overall machinery, right? And so clearly amazing stuff takes place over those pins as we essentially control voltages on motors as well as, you know, uh, receive I'll call the voltages off of sensors, and quite often on that same processor, you do really interesting mathematics to extract from, you know, those voltage measurements the important measurements that are going to essentially guide your system. And um, you know, and it's through that that we put numbers into the control algorithm that it can do things with. So hopefully that's an okay definition of, of kind of the idea of a hardware piece that we call the controller. Right. And the key to it is getting that correct algorithm onto the, the processor. And, and that's really what's contained inside of this block. You know, this algorithm with, you know, calculus, you, you know, uh, numerical integration, derivative assessments, uh, and just basic math and plus and multiplications and all kinds of stuff we're seeing exists inside this. All right. And so the process is a little bit tricky. All right, and I want to go through a couple of things, right? So what, one of them is when you connect to hardware, this here, you can see it, you know, the, 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 we haven't really even, you know, shown much of this yet at all, but this is essentially the way we're doing all that great, you know, calculus of numerical integration and derivative calculations and so forth. You know, is it, we, we have solver settings that by default have been working quite well for us. And with regard to solving a dynamic system, one of your first choices is, do I do it with variable time step methods or fixed time step methods, right? And you would think that you'd always want to choose variable time step, but when it comes to hardware, you know, the, the idea of variable time steps where I'm going to try it again if I don't get the right answer with a smaller delta T. Well, you don't have that opportunity to try anything again when you're connecting to hardware. So hardware um, solutions are always fixed step. And in general, that means a rate at which you're going to operate. And I'm going to just go ahead and set it right now at 10,000. Well, this is a time step. So instead of being 10,000 hertz, it's going to be 1 divided by 10,000. All right. And we'll click on OK. All right. Now, the other thing is that Simulink's optimization of the overall calculation uh, sometimes means that I'll do a little bit of what's in the plant and a little bit of the controller. But you know, essentially, the sequence of the calculation can vary and, and is not exactly constrained by these soft boundaries of what we call subsystems. And so we have a harder constraint. We call it the atomic subsystem. And so. I'm going to do that next. I'm going to treat that as an atomic unit. All right. And now, finally, I'm going to kind of get into what I'm beginning to believe is a really great way of developing embedded so software. And the um, and I, I for the most part, the the customers I do meet with um, really like this idea. But again, I'm not the software specialist. I'm a person who participates in the process by providing a, a very good facility to test controls against simulations prior to commitment to hardware. And I mean hardware, which might be motors and mechanical linkages and so, so forth, but, but to represent those via simulations. Um, and to also, you know, uh, provide insight with you know, what the mechanics is so that we design these controls quite well too. And, and hopefully that's a, a point that I've made pretty well in the, the previous videos. All right. So, but, it, but anyways, we're going to get into something called a, a um, this, this is unfortunate, but the kind of an easy fix, right? So, so 
with you. See, I'm showing more of my screen, but but the move I'm trying to do right now is still kind of going over on the right, All right? And so what I want to do is to create a model reference, right? And so I go model reference right there. And that's going to bring up this uh, utility that's going to essentially check the model and make sure it meets the standards of what a model reference is. And so I'm going to just click on convert. And the main one was converted into an atomic subsystem. And so I think this is going to work. At least it did in, in my practice, so my, my rehearsal for this. And it looks like it did, All right? And so for our model that we just checked from our previous video, you can see that it made the replacement, right? And so that controller has been replaced by a, a, a model reference. And I know that because of the new symbols that are taking place in the corners of the block, right? And what it really means, and notice as I kind of hover over the, the icon of Simulink, is if I click on that, it'll open up that model for me. And there's probably all kinds of reasons why this is so hugely valuable, but I'll, I'll kind of get it the way that, it, that I understand it, right? And uh, I'd say beginning is that, that we've essentially defined really good boundaries with these input and output blocks that generally are negotiated between the teams that, that really care about such things. You know, if I'm going to choose to run this at a certain rate, the the that that rate needs to be agreed upon by both the software developers as well as those who are kind of defining the device that, that will either provide signals or receive signals at the discrete rates that, that they're capable of doing. Okay, so anyways, it's a, an interesting conversation and, and uh, I won't try to uh, pursue it too much further than that, right? Um, but one of the, the main things is that you can kind of define how your your calculation is updated, you know, according to like solution methods, and you'll see here we're in fixed time step, and there are all kinds of, you know, runga kata, and there are like fourth order, fifth order, first order, you know, methods to do this. The one I'm going to choose might be interesting, and it certainly is interesting to me as I begin began to understand this sort of stuff. But the the idea, the, the what we're going to choose is discrete, no continuous states, right? Now it means that that we're going to run the algorithm at 10,000 hertz, but but kind of what it means, and I'm going to go ahead and just click on OK, is that this calculation represented by what's in here is very self-contained. And kind of a specific thing we do need to be attentive to right now is, is here. And here is something PID S and S. You might be familiar from like the Laplace transform, and there, there absolutely is a implication of continuity that's that's um, expressed through that that idea of S, but in general, when you do discrete math, you want to be very um, intentional in, in in making that choice for it to be discrete. Okay, and and so as soon as you make discrete, you're going to see S gets replaced by Z. It's not exactly the same formula in S, but it's basically a discrete update and a discrete integration as well as the calculation of a discrete derivative. Now these inherited sample times generally work quite well and so I'm just going to go with that on that. And I think I have two of these integrators in here and so I'm not, not integrators but PID blocks and so we'll make them both discrete. And I think that that's pretty good. And so uh, I'm going to go in here and save it and go into the model that's referencing that and I'm going to just hit run and see how we're doing. Seems that the math is still working pretty well. That's a good thing. You know, and again, that's kind of one of your tests for testing uh, against simulation. All right. Uh, but what I want to do now is kind of get into the code generation piece. Uh, modeling gets me access to my model settings again and um, we'll bring our attention to uh, code generation all right and uh, 
MathWorks, of course, gives you all kinds of options. You know, if you don't know it, we, we for example, we have over 100 products. Most people think we only, well, most people think we only have one and they call it MATLAB. But you know, maybe there's a pretty big you know, population out there that know we have at least two, and that's MATLAB and Simulink. But, but really, it's over 100. And I'll just say that this choice is kind of reflected in our, our product offering. And it, it's going from G to E, we've, we basically are employing the embedded coder. You know, and that's one of our products. And so just kind of clicking on the background here, you'll see there are mo more options now available. And again, you know, there are people who are much more expert than me in not only in embedded code and embedded software and the, the, you know, the, the specifics of doing it well, but also our tool called Embedded Coder. And, and so again, this is not a demonstration of how you should do it, but certainly a pronouncement that it does exist and, and an endorsement that it works quite well. So anyways, with that, I think we got it. Let's, let's go ahead and try it at least. And so uh, I always like hitting save, and I do always like hitting the run button again. So this is updated, and that our model of the overall thing is accessing all those changes we just made. And so we want to just check with our scope and make sure that, that the, the, the blue line is still falling on top of the yellow line, which it is. All right. Okay. And so let's get back into that model. And let's go ahead and try it out. And so I'm going to just hit Control B for build. I'm going to launch the diagnostics. And if there's a problem, we'll probably know pretty soon. And then we'll see. Oh, oh, well, this is an important one. Okay, so let's get to it. And uh, what's really saying is that in my um, my simulation model, you know, with the command signal and the plant and all that kind of stuff, uh, there there is a setting. It's called continuous time setting. And and uh, all it's really saying is, well, it's probably a good idea to to allow us to convert that to a discrete approximation that satisfies the rates that we've chosen for this. But we just want to make sure you know that you're doing that. And so let's click on OK. And uh, we'll try this one more time. View the diagnostics again. So again, I don't want to see red. I'm getting to feel a little bit better about this. Um, so let's let's let it play out. And uh, you know, if you like what you're saying, and I'd say. You know, I, again, I did endorse this because I think this is an awesome way to to just kind of update quickly as you kind of develop a system and ultimately develop software that will work with real systems. Um, you know that 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 iteration becomes pretty pretty quick because it, it comes down to a few um, highly informed, you know, keystrokes like Control B. And, and what I mean by informed is that the, the process has been set, the template has been set, so that you can kind of get the code that you're looking for. All right. And so it's looking pretty good. And hopefully I don't forget to check that generate report button or anything like that, because I definitely want you to see this, the code. And there's your code. And certainly there's all kinds of ways you could take this demonstration from this point. Uh, but again, I'm, you know, I'm going to make reference to a lot of those things have been done. A lot of it's captured on our website. And certainly I would never tr want to trivialize, you know, how important software is to a system and how important it is for it to be developed um, properly with real professionals at developing software. Right. And, uh, and I think you'll see as you learn more about this, that, that ultimately what we're doing is providing code that can be nicely integrated into all those existing platforms of all the teams out there that are, are, are developing embedded software, uh, especially for con uh, control uh, systems. So anyways, thank you.